You best. Well, good morning, church. It is a good day to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So today we are finishing up our sermon series on the book of Colossians. And this is a letter written by Paul to the believers in Colossae. And so we saw in the beginning that Paul starts his letter by connecting with and encouraging the fellow believers, just kind of pouring out his love on them, praying over them, and building up their faith. Paul then moves on to remind them and us that Jesus is supreme. He is God. He is creator. He is ruler over all. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. The blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross was payment in full for our sin debt, and now we can be reconciled with God and live in fellowship and relationship with him. And Paul reminds us that it is a privilege and an honor to be people who help point others to Jesus. Paul then spent some time in his letter talking about the dangers of taking God's word and wrapping it around the things of our world instead of taking the things of our lives and our world and bringing them into submission to the will and the ways and the word of God. Paul gives them and us some things to watch out for, and he continues to emphasize the importance of having that personal, intimate, growing relationship with Jesus. You see, it's important that we continue to let God transform our lives and our hearts we cannot get in that pattern of comparing ourselves to the world and feeling like, hey, you know what, I'm doing pretty good. You see, God has never suggested that we use the world as a measuring stick for our spiritual growth. Instead, he calls us to look at him, to keep digging in to the things of God, growing closer to him and allowing him to change us on the inside and let that spill out of us to the outside that God may be glorified. Paul then goes on to talk about the relational issues of our lives, how we are to conduct ourselves in our, in our families and in our work, and, and that we are to remember that in all things we are and in all the things we do, we do it all for an audience of one. It is God we are really serving or not serving in how we interact with the people and the things around us. In everything you do, in all the different areas of your life, in all your responsibilities, as you manage all the blessings God has given you, as you work and lead and play and pray, as you live and give and love, in all you do, do it in such a way that brings glory to God. You see, the things that you do, they do matter and they do make a difference. And you are not here by accident. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Well, so today we finish up Colossians. And we're going to be looking at uh, chapter 4, verses 2 through 18 today. And as we bring this series to an end, and as Paul closes his letter to the Colossians, we see that we still have some things that we need to learn that are very important. So let's just kind of tear this scripture apart piece by piece. Let's look first at verse 2. Scripture says this, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. It says, devote yourselves. You see, sometimes we forget the importance of personal devotion to the things of God. You see, it's not enough just to put yourself in the environment of the things of God and think that that is what is going to make all the difference. You see, being in a church doesn't make you a Christ follower any more than standing in a garage makes you a car. Being a Christ follower, that requires following, not just going along with the crowd. You see, it's all about your personal pursuit of him, your devotion. It's a choice that you make to follow after and seek to become more like Jesus. And part of that is this intentional surrender, this devoting of yourself to prayer, to being in communication with God on a regular basis, and not just talking to him, but listening to his voice, learning from him, letting God direct your thoughts and determine your path. So devote yourselves and be watchful, Paul says. Well, watchful of what? Watchful of those things that creep into your life and your path that pull you away from the things of God. Those things that cause you to take your eyes off of him, even if just temporarily, 
and put your eyes and your thoughts and your efforts and your intentions on the things of this world. Be watchful because those things will end up causing you pain. You see, nothing good ever comes from looking at the world instead of looking at God. So be watchful that you don't end up chasing after the wrong thing. Amen? Amen. And be thankful. Gratitude is important. And when you look at your world through the eyes of gratitude, it changes your thoughts and your actions and your attitude and your future. You see, gratitude is important, and it can change your world, and it can definitely help you to live a life with fewer regrets. Let's look at verses 3 and 4. Scripture says this, And pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I might proclaim it clearly as I should. So here's what I see Paul saying. We need to be devoted to praying for one another. And we need to pray that the kingdom of God, that the reality of his love and forgiveness and mercy and grace, that that will spread to others. That more people may know the peace and comfort and strength that comes from him. That they may know the real Jesus and begin to live Jesus. That the kingdom of grace may come to this earth in increasing measure. Look at verse 5, it says this, Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. So I see Paul saying this, People who don't know Jesus, but know that you know Jesus, they're watching you. So be mindful of that and seek to be an instrument of God's love and compassion to all. Let's look at verse 6, it says this, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. So Paul says, the words that come from your lips, they are important. People are listening to them. You know, sometimes we just talk to talk. But we need to know that even the careless words that we utter are falling on someone's ears. So let us, the people of God, strive strive to raise the level of our conversation that they may be full of grace and not gossip or complaints. May our words be seasoned with salt the way God's words are, that, that we may speak the truth, but that we may do so in such a way that is pleasing to the ears and not harsh or bitter. And when our conversations are full of grace and our words are seasoned with salt, then we will be better able to answer everyone who poses a thought or a question or a challenge or throws an insult or accusation against us. Amen? Let's look at verses 7 through 9. Scripture says this, Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. So here's what I see Paul saying in, in that passage, that there are many times that we need to personally connect with people for the express purpose of sharing life with them and being an encouragement to their hearts. And even more so, in this world of instant communication and fragmented correspondence, we need to be even more intentional about connecting with people and maybe even making a journey to go see them personally with appropriate social distancing, of course, but to go and encourage, to to bring peace and hope to them. And there are times when that is the most important and necessary thing you can do. Let's look at verses 10 through 15. My fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, sends you his greeting, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instruction about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is justice, also sends greetings. They are the only Jews among my co-workers for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, who who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. 
He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those at Laodicea and Hierapolis. Our dear friend Luke the doctor and Demas send greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church that meets at her house. So here's what I see. Paul right here is making a point to let the Colossians know that there are many fellow workers supporting them and praying for them. And that God is working through so many people. That it's not just about Paul. That this is no one man show. You see, Paul knows that it's important to raise up leaders and to give them opportunity to serve and to bless and to encourage. And you know what? That's a challenge and an encouragement to us too. To be leaders who help create opportunity for others. That we not overextend ourselves even in the cause of Christ, but that we may help to empower others. That we may be willing to give up, to hand over, to open up space for others to serve and to work and to lead. And that we would help teach and guide and mentor them so that they too may grow in their faith and their service to the king. Leadership. That's what Paul's talking about. At least that's what I see him talking about here. Verse 16. After this letter has been read to you, see that it is also read to the church of the Laodiceans and that you in turn read the letter from Laodicea. So what I see Paul saying here is this. Don't let the lessons from God fall to the ground. Don't just hear and read these instructions and say, okay, okay, I got it, and move on to what's next. You see, we do that a lot with God's word. We read through it quickly and then we move on to the next chapter or the next book. But don't be afraid to camp out in the scripture, to stay in one place long enough to let his word and his wisdom penetrate your heart and transform your life. Verse 17, tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you have received in the Lord. Paul's like, hey, just keep running the race. Don't you dare just start something and then get bored with it and let it fall to the ground. See it through to completion. Finish well each assignment that God puts you to doing. Work at it with all of your heart because God, it is him that, is, that will be inspecting your work. It is him that you are serving. So finish well. Finally, Paul closes with these words in verse 18. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. Hmm. Remember my chains. Be reminded that the cause of Christ, it's worth it. And even if the world throws you in jail for following him, it's worth it. Remember my chains. Remember the love and the grace of Jesus. And remember that it matters. You know, many years ago, Stephen Curtis Chapman wrote a song called Remember Your Chains. And some of the lyrics are so very powerful. I want to read a few of these to you. He says this, remember your chains. Remember the prison that once held you before the love of God broke through. Remember that place that you were without grace. And when you see where you are now, remember your chains and remember that your chains are gone. Hmm. So powerful, isn't it? Church, if you walk away from this message today with only one thing, may this be that one thing. Remember your chains and remember that your chains are gone. That you have been set free, forgiven, made whole. That the old has passed away and the new has come. Remember your chains and remember that your chains are gone. And may the reality, that reality, may that be the thing that drives you forward and deeper into his presence. And may the environment around you and your thoughts and your words and your attitude and your outlook, may they be full of grace and of God. You have Jesus. Live Jesus. 
Set your heart and your mind on him. Live Jesus. Be rooted and built up, strengthened in the faith and overflowing with thankfulness. It is him that we proclaim. We point to him. We follow him. He alone is your answer, your source, your hope, your strength, and your peace. So live Jesus. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to come around your word, to camp out here in Colossians for some time, to, 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 to pause and to stay in this scripture long enough to dig deeper, to see the, the truths that you reveal in the words beyond just what's on the page. God, I'm so grateful that your word is living and active that no matter how many times we read it, no matter when it is that we come to it, that your word speaks to our hearts, that your word can change our lives, that your word brings us encouragement, that it brings us conviction, and that it helps us to know the next steps to take on the path that give you glory. God, thank you for your word. God, we thank you, too, for the, the reality of the blood of Jesus shed on the cross, that our chains may be broken, that those chains that once held us before we knew you, that they're gone. God, help us to remember that you've saved us from our sins and ourselves and help us to live Jesus. Help us to point to you in all that we do. God, I pray that you would be with each and every person, that you would ordain their steps, that you would help them to season their words with salt, that you would help us to speak peace and encouragement everywhere that we go. God, we thank you and we praise you for everything that you are in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.